here's something you don't see every day, at least not anymore. This is an early top load VCR. Not the earliest. Um, this is actually after they switched to uh, digital tuning. But it's still quite old. This is actually a Hitachi. The, um, the, the uh, nameplate is missing. It actually it would be on this door that sits here. Um, when I got this, or when I found it, uh, just a few hours ago, someone had actually thrown it right through the picture tube of a 27-inch television set. And that's why it has all this damage on it. And there might be some broken glass here and there. But it was literally thrown right through a television picture tube in the trash. Um, definitely not... Uh, yeah, definitely not cool. But anyway, um, I don't even know what condition it's in, and the the uh, the cord nabber finally or already got to it, so I have to come up with my own power cord solution. And they cut it so close to the to the chassis that well, it's going to be a difficult one to work on. It actually has these uh, old-fashioned I think they're like 300 ohm antenna converter boxes. Those off. I don't even think you can get these anymore, to be honest with you. No. Coaxial converters. They're good to have, I tell you. I don't, well, it doesn't really matter anymore because you can't use them anymore, so. But anyway. Yes, that is a carburetor on my counter. I'm waiting for parts to rebuild that for my scooter. But anyway, uh, so. I don't know what to do with this thing. I really just got it to um, to make this video. That was the only reason I picked it up. <laughs> I have no other reason, no other desire to own one of these. I already have a working VCR. I don't need another. But this one's a classic. This is an antique. Actually, legitimately, I think it might be an antique. Um, it's at least 30 years old up to 35 years of age, um, so that would make it an antique, I'm pretty sure. So let's, uh, let's try to crack it open. But anyway, this is the control panel, the main control panel for setting the clock, uh, for setting the timer record function, etc. On the front here we have our, t our presets uh, for channels, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L. And these are the fine-tune adjustments for each channel. On these early digital tuning models, um, each channel had to be dialed in. It was a painstaking, arduous task, and believe me, it was a nightmare. Um, oh, this one has a manual eject. I didn't notice that. So no eject motor in this model. This is, again, a very early unit. Um, but we'll take a good look inside here. and That's pretty cool. It also has, uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but a mechanical uh, tape counter, or a footage counter. Um, so this thing is, this is a relic. I mean, let me tell you what. Not the oldest I've seen. The oldest ones I've seen have actual tuning knobs on the front. Um, and those are from the late 70s. This is probably from like 1981 to 1983, if I already guess. So let me get this thing cracked open, and we'll take a look at The word crude comes to mind when you pop the cover off the Hitachi VCR. Um, it's definitely early, um, early VHS era. Can't figure out in an exact year, or even, can't even come close to the production on this thing. I, I just don't know when it was made. But... For the sake of argument, I'm going to say 1982. But I've uh, popped the cover off, as you can clearly see. This unit is very dusty on the inside. Um, this is what the uh, tuning area looks like. Tuning, RF conversion, all that stuff. Um, we've got our uh, programmable keypad here. And... Um, yeah, it's it's old, <laughs> very old. The um, the deck itself is made from multiple layers of steel. 
um, later VCRs were manufactured, or uh, VCR decks were manufactured from a single piece of of cast alloy. I'm thinking the um, the early Panasonic Omnivisions and later models, um, like I believe even my RCA over there from 1989, um, the deck was made from a single piece of stamped steel. But these early ones were uh, were very elaborately built. And we are gonna we are gonna power this up. We're gonna try to I gotta figure out the wiring scheme back here and see what I need to do to get some power to it. I really wish people wouldn't steal cords. That just makes my life miserable. But hey, you know what? At least they left the unit. I suppose that's a good thing. I know I'm not the only one grabbing stuff like this from the dump to make videos of. I just do it for entertainment value. But anyway. And yeah, this thing isn't really worth preserving, um, even if it works. Mainly because there really isn't much interest in VCRs as collector's items yet. And, uh, and parts are going to be impossible to find. Like the belts, for example. I'm sure I can get new belts for it, but I'd have to size them up and belt chop them. Looks like I can get this panel off here without breaking anything. There's not much holding it on. There. Really? What I want to do is gain access to the... Uh... Oh, it's already cracked. Really? Yeah, it is. I guess it doesn't matter. <laughs> Somebody already broke it. We'll just rip it off. If I do get it working, though, I think I might actually uh, leave it with the covers off because the covers are ruined beyond belief, and uh, I think it looks better without them. You know what? I have to take the bottom pan off to get this off first. So let's do that. Oh, and it is heavy, mind you. It is very heavy. Okay. Let's uh, get the bottom pan off. Okay, I had to remove this. Uh, this is like a, a fuse board. Probably a line filter as well. And I discovered something. The one amp fuse has been replaced. This has actually been apart before. But the problem is, that when they soldered the fuse to the, to the board, it broke free. The fuse is still good. It's not blown at all. So I've got to re-solder that to the board. I've got a new power cord here. We're just going to solder it directly to the board as well. And we'll probably get this thing going. Alright, we've got our power cord soldered in. This should be in a grommet, and it should be tied to something in the chassis, but this is only for demonstration purposes only. I've re-soldered the fuse. What the hell? Let's try it. I'm going to throw some stuff away. Little odds and ends that we removed in the process that we don't need anymore. Okay, here we go. This thing blows up. You saw it on bbishoppcm.com. Well, it didn't blow up. Um, turn it on. Eject. Let's get a good look at that mechanism. Um, whoa. Alright, this isn't going to run. That belt that runs, actually, you know what, that only runs the counter, I think. So we can remove that belt and not have to worry about anything. Unless it depends on that counter to detect uh, tape speed. That would be a problem. The problem is, these old belts, they tend to... Oh man, they turn to mush. This is what they turn into. I could ball this up into a into a ball and just the rubber falls apart. So first off, we've got some bad belts. Like I said, I think that one only runs the tape counter, so it runs right off the spindle here. But we've got to get the bits and pieces of belt out of there before we attempt to run a tape in it. Or maybe we can get away with that. A little bit of fluff. 
I don't know. I, I'm gonna have to get some. Ugh. Used to be a belt. All right. In theory, I could replace them, but that would involve spending money. <laughs> And I don't want to put money into this. I just want to see if it works. Oh man, what a mess. What a freaking mess. Well, we got most of the belts out of there. Um, there are still other belts in the unit that may or may not work. So, let's get it. This is going to be our sacrificial lamb. This is a tape that I record on. Uh... It's not new. Well, it's actually re relatively new, but let's see what happens. We're going to do a fast forward just to see if the mechanism even works. I'm so, wow! Didn't expect that. All right. Well, I expected that. <laughs> oh, you know what? It needs that belt. I think. It doesn't detect tape movement. It thinks it's... We need that counter to run in order for it to, to do anything legitimate. So let's rewind. It's not seized up or anything. It's actually running the tape. Okay. Let's try playing. Now this is, this is probably not going to work, but it's worth a shot. It's not going. That I can't explain. I can't explain why it just did that. Um, because... Oh, actually. It should be running. At least it puts it back. It did put the tape back in the case. Um, alright, here's why. Yeah. I kind of thought this might happen. Alright, I think the, um, I think this has two different drive motors. I have to, I have to really t get a good look underneath and see if that's true or not, but some units have, like, now that wouldn't make any sense. And if it was the counter not working, that would, that would present itself in other ways, because it's not even trying to play the tape, it just, it doesn't move forward at all. Unless the cap stand is... Yeah, that's it. The, um, the cap stand is the problem. There's a belt that drives it. And I bet you anything, dollars to donuts, or whoever that saying goes, the belt that drives the cap stand is not working. Or is missing, or has fallen off, or failed in other ways. So we've got to pull the unit apart, take a look underneath, and see what's going on with the cap stand. Okay, we've removed a couple of screws, and it's just like opening the hood of your car after that point. Um, this whole board swings open, and then we get a better idea as to what's, uh, what makes this thing tick. Um, the cap stand motor, yeah, that's, that's, that's the problem right there. Okay, I just need this to stay open like so. I wish I could. Oh, do I wish? I wish. I wish I was a fish. There's one wire holding this sucker open like that. There should be a prop rod in here somewhere, I think. I guess not. Alright. So we're just going to hold it. Stop it, you piece of junk. Hey! Okay. Um, this is our cap stand motor. And my, is it heavy. Um... This is our head motor, and uh, that 
You see it has an optical sensor that senses movement. And actually, no, that is a magnetic sensor that senses head movement. That's different. Never seen that before. Um, but I did say this was an earlier unit. Okay, we have this motor here, which drives the the uh, the reels for reels. And we have this rubber wheel down here. This is the rubber wheel that is causing the problem. And uh, when this motor spins, and this is engaged, it drives part of the mechanism. I don't know what yet, though. But in order to fix this problem, we've got to pull all this apart. Take that rubber wheel, and I'm going to show you a trick that I learned many years ago. First thing we need to do is drop the capstan motor. And it's held in by three screws. I think. I think. I really don't know. I'm just guessing here. Well, those are long enough to do the job. I've never worked on an early mechanism like this. This is the oldest one I've ever worked on, and I've been fixing VCRs since I was a kid. Um, actually, I, I shouldn't say that. I've worked on VCRs since I was a kid. I've only recently started learning how to properly repair things. I was just playing around then. Can't get that other screw out without removing more stuff. I don't want to remove more stuff. I just want to fix the stupid thing. Alright. Hmm. Alright, I think I need to take this off first. It's like a puzzle. It is a puzzle, damn it. Let's try to figure out what this does. That's a, that was my stomach. That's a sensor for something. Alright, and now that that's out... I can remove the actual capstan pulley. Take the spring off at first. Okay, here we go. That's the idle. I'm sorry. That's the idler pulley. That's the proper term for that piece. Now this doohickey can come out. Now I can take out the third screw. Oop. Flip the unit back. This is what had to come out. This is the. Yep, that's what I thought. Now this has to be drivable. This isn't driving because this rubber band that goes around it, it's actually a rubber tire, is dry. It's dried out. And what I can do, and this has worked for me on many occasions, but in order for this to work, I have to get this whole thing out of here. Um, I flip it inside out. Write this in your notebooks, kids. When you're working on an old 1980s VCR and the thing doesn't work because of that tire, that is why. Alright, here's another. This is the belt that actually does drive. Look at that. It turned to... Ugh. That's the belt that runs off of the... Um, oh, man. What a mess. i got to wash my hands. That's what, that's what happens to these belts. They turn into... Alright, this unit can run without that belt, but it will not run without the belt on the other side of this because that, as you can clearly see, has a, um, it looks like it could be a magnetic sensor or an optical sensor. No, it's magnetic. 
Um, that's what senses tape movement. If this doesn't sense tape movement... Okay, so we've cleaned my hands, all right? The belt that I just removed um, actually drives the... It directly drives the tape counter. That is okay if that belt is missing because it doesn't really do anything for the machine, it just just for the user. But the other belt on the other side of this shaft has to be present because this is what senses tape movement. It's a very crude unit. The current VC, well, the last VCRs made used an optical sensor underneath the um, one of the pulleys or reels. In fact, I believe most of them have two, one on each. Um, this one, this is a little crude, but nevertheless, it has to be present for the unit to work. So I'm going to take a shot of the dark here and try to pull this out without damaging anything. And uh, so, yeah, we need to, um, this is what drives the, yeah, okay, I got it. I'm figuring this out. Now, because this is, this is a very unusual unit from what I'm used to, to messing with, the capstan is driven by the capstan drive. When the unit is in play mode, which is why it only works in fast, fast forward and reverse, um, is because when the unit is in play mode, this solenoid engages and forces this pulley up against the, um, the rim of this drive wheel here. And uh, we can make it play a tape. We can do that. That much I can do. But I've got to fix this. Success. Next thing we need to do is roll it on a flat surface to seat the rubber tire. Get it in there nice and evenly. Need a little more work. Okay. This sucker is ready to go. All right, we are all reassembled here, and I do apologize about the horrible lighting. It just seems like it just casts shadows more than anything. But when this solenoid is engaged, it actually disengages the uh, the idler. So we're gonna pop this motor back in carefully. And then we're going to screw it in from the other side. So now, when I turn this, that tire should spin, and it does. But what kind of concerns me here is that the clutch assembly itself is a little loose. Um, I don't think this is going to work. But now we've fixed that problem. Now that actually turns like it's supposed to. So we'll see what happens. board is back in place. Now to flip it over. Okay, we're reassembled. Totally. All right. Now to test it out. Now we know that our counter isn't going to work. Our internal tape counter, because we've removed the belt, more or less, it's all over my hands. Um, so it wasn't removed by choice. We're gonna now power the unit up. <clears throat> Try to get it on us. I don't want it sitting on my counter. I don't want to scratch up my new countertops. So I'm going to just plug this sucker in. All right. I meant to show you guys the mechanism that actually makes that whirring sound. This literally has the speed control mechanism from a music box controlling the lift mechanism. I <laughs> it just kind of blew my mind when I saw that. I noticed it. It was actually next to the um, rubber idler tire thing. Here we go. We're going to fast forward first. We're not. Rewind. Fast forward. Stop. Play. It's going to eat my tape. You watch. Yeah, it is. Nope. That didn't work. It actually made it worse. 
understand how. How could that have gotten worse? Well, we didn't fix anything, unfortunately. Huh. Capstan screaming for its life, but nothing. Maybe we put it out of time. Not like Back to the Future, but I mean like literally out of time. Well, this does feel a little stiff. Well, that's unfortunate. Because I thought I had it going. Dang it. Hmm. All right, we're going to try something a bit, I'm going to say avant-garde, uh, or unusual. Um, I'm going to try this while looking underneath here. So, we're in the stop position. I'm going to press fast forward. Let's see what happens. This motor is not engaging. Or something is stuck. Play. See that? Hmm. So it looks like something might be out of time. That might be it. Not out of time. The, the now, what's really happened here is that. This motor has developed the, the issue all in its very own self here. I could put that to music. I'm not going to spend too much more time on this because I really have other things to do. And uh, I'm not really preserving this unit. I have no desire to. So, if it was in better shape, like if the covers weren't smashed in from being sent through a screen of a 27-inch television set, I might have more of a motivation to, to preserve this, this particular uh, uh, unit. But I don't have that motivation anymore because you know, I've got other things to do. So, let's pop this out. What's happening here is that we're, we're experiencing some slippage here. Let's see what it looks like out of the unit. Oh yeah, that's the problem right there. The um, the rubber is just so far gone that uh, it's just not going to work. If I press play, No, oh, I've lost that tape. Shouldn't have done that. Now what happens when we take away the speed sensor on the head? Let's just take a look. What if it can't find the speed? What if it doesn't know how fast it's going? What then? What if we just take this little head motor thing out of the picture? Like so. And press play. What happens? Oh, apparently nothing. So maybe it's actually used for synchronization. That could be it. Hmm. 
Well, that's it for now. I guess we're done here. I'm going to get rid of this device. Um, I've had my fun. Now you know what these old suckers look like inside. I use the word suckers because it's much better than the alternative. Alright then. We're done. We're done. We're done.